Yup. It has come to this. I read this book at school. Yep. You can imagine. Hello, fellow questers! It is I, Aaron the Book Quester, and today I got this uh, no comment book, Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare himself, and well, let's get right on to it. So, I'm sure most of you know this book, and also, Shakespeare fans, get ready for a roast. And so, let's start. So, the book is basically about, well, it can be basically just explained five words. Two meets love, nah, excellent, and tragedy. So, first off, Romeo and Juliet meet in a party. They fall in love. Of course, they're polar opposites and their families hate each other. And then they love each other. And then their parents say, nope, you can't. No, 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 bad boy. And then Romeo gets exiled. Yep. And then, there's a little mix-up about a plan, and then they both commit suicide. I know, right? Great plot, Shakespeare! Oh my god! Uh, I couldn't have thought of that! Jeez! Oh my god! Okay, I'm, I'm being- I'm, I know, I know. Okay. So, let's look at this. First of all, this book was absolute torture to read, and it had nothing to do with the Shakespearean English. But let's fair- but first off, let's make fun of the Shakespeare in English first. Okay, let's just read any, any line in this book. My ears have yet not drunk a hundred words of thy tongue's uttering, and I know the sound, art thou not Romeo and a Montague? Montague, I'm sorry, but... <sighs> Why? Why? Okay, okay, okay. Let's be merciful at the start. The language is understandable. This book was, like, this book was written centuries ago. Centuries ago, in the Victorian age. There's a reason why they call this type of English Shakespeare in English, because it's so radically different from the modern, beautiful, evolved, and dare say, better language that we speak today, that it's unrecognizable. It's not even a freaking English language. That's what I say. And, yeah, it, it, and it's just pretty hard to read, okay? First off, that's the first thing. Second thing, Shakespeare meant to write this as a fun little thing, and he kind of wrote this in his day in, like, modern slang that teenagers would use. So, so basically what I'm saying is, if I translate this book in directly into modern English, into the modern publishing company, it would be called a sappy, simple, no plot romance story made of modern slang and immature humor. That is the critique that I am giving this book. Because the thing is, the thing is, they basically just, they basically just roast each other and have little references of nudity and, you know, that stuff. And then they talk in modern slang, well, in Shakespeare's time, anyway. And the plot is absolute garbage. Don't even make me start of the plot. Of course it was made a couple centuries ago, so I should be merciful. I'm not going to be. Come on. They meet. They fall in love immediately. Of course they do. They fall in love immediately. First thing they do, then they meet. That guy's hot. That girl's hot. Oh, wow. Life works that way. No, it does not. And don't even get me started about Juliet and Romeo's age. Juliet is 13. Romeo is 20-something. And they fall in love. Of course they do. Okay. Okay. To be fair, it does show the time difference, so we're learning. Quote-unquote. But if you're saying that if we read this and we get a bit of history, I would rather read an actual historical book rather than read this, and that's saying a lot, because I absolutely despise historical books. And you better take my word for it, because I'm an avid fantasy romance mystery reader, and this is 
well, okay. And also, you can think about like, oh, there's themes of star-crossed lovers, oh, there, um, uh, there's themes of love, of war, of love and violence, uh, that's, um, no, first off. It's called, it's also known as plot armor, by the way, in case you have, you aren't from the 21st century. And second off, these themes are really typical for usual fantasy romance or just even romance books. And like I already stated, it's supposed to be written in slang, well, slang of Shakespeare time anyway. So let's think about it. Slang plus bad plot plus shallow characters plus no character development and all the fact that it's sappy amounts just to a bad book. Okay, you might say, oh, it's unfair. It's, it's an old book, man. It's the first of its kind. It was the first to be with this big plot, this tragedy with romance and drama. It's the first, dude. Stop being so critiquing about it. You're very offensive. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So let me ask you this, would we use a Walkman to this day? Would we use a freaking Walkman, a Walkman as in, you know, that thing with a box and headphones, the first of its kind. It was revolutionary when it was first created. You can listen to music anywhere we're walking. Absolutely genius at that time. Right now, not so much. Is it unfair to compare them? In terms of technology, yes, but would we study Walkman when we could study new, more modern, and better technology? Absolutely not. It's basically, if Romeo and Juliet is Walkman, the more recent fantasy romance or just romance books are like AirPods. Cooler, better plot, and just in general, well, of course, not all, I'm, I'm just talking about the best of the romance books. This is supposed to be the best romance book from that century, because apparently at that century, romance books just didn't exist at all, and it's supposed to be the best of them. And if we talk about the best of our romance books in the 21st century even, nope, much better. So, like I said with my analogy, analogy, Walkman, AirPods. Walkman was great when it was out, not anymore. We aren't gonna use it, we aren't gonna study it, and like I said, we aren't physically gonna use a Walkman in the 21st century. Like, we would use AirPods or at least some sort of decent headphones. So, that is, I think, my review on Romeo and Juliet. There's basically nothing that you can get out of this that you can't get out of any other book. And, of course, of course, Shakespeare. At that time, you were revolutionary. Props, you were very original at that time. As I, and I think, it's again and again, at that time, a couple hundred years ago. And, okay, and okay, I'm done with the book, I'm done with the book, don't worry, don't worry, Shakespeare fans, who are already probably typing in the comments by now. I guess it's time to move on to the adaptations. Ho 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 ho! Okay, first off, in, at Shakespeare time, plays were loud things. They were parties, they were nightclubs, basically. You threw rotten apples at people who didn't act very well, and it was loud, it was rowdy, it was full of smoke, people were smoking, people were moving, jostling, and talking. That's the play that Shakespeare was envisioning, and these days you have to sit really quietly in a really, really strict place. So it's like, bro, why? Second off, the dialogue. So if you're gonna add up to Romeo and Juliet, and it is a very classic kind of story, I would make it a space opera, you know, with some prince, some some kind of some planet, and then a Star Wars type. Because the thing is, these cringy adaptations from say from say the 20th century, for example. Ho 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 ho. I mean, have you seen like that movie of Romeo and Juliet? Um, with guns and everything. It's just basically with guns, and all, all of them have Texas accents for some reason. And it's just absolutely terrible. If you're gonna make, if you're gonna modernize Romeo and Juliet, just change the dialogue. You have modern clothes, you're riding cars, you have guns. And you're talking in Shakespearean dialogue. Imagine, imagine modern day, I'm a kid at your school, and I'm saying, Consort, what dost thou make us ministers? And thou make ministers of us. Look to hear nothing but discords. 
Here's my fiddlestick. Here shall make you dance. Zounds, consort. That, I'm sure you get my point by now. And all in all, if you're making a, make an adaptation, please adapt, adapt it to the 21st century. Okay, so my final word on Romeo and Juliet. It was great while it lasted a couple centuries ago. And maybe it is worth reading once over and saying like, oh my gosh, writing back then was like this, and it was very radical, it was very revolutionary at that time, and okay, I get it, I'm never gonna read it again, I'm gonna burn it. So, that's basically what you should do, not study it for hours in English class. And even if you do study it, I would suggest like looking into it and thinking about it more critically like why would shakespeare include these themes and okay maybe he was probably really smart and included these themes but if you look at it in some ways that's literally just plot armor in some ways so yeah and honestly honestly i'm i don't i'm not sure if i'm gonna read more shakespeare like you know king lear and um hamlet etc and i maybe those are better than this particular one but all in all was it left a bad taste in my mouth and it just wasn't a good book or any a book that I read twice or even once for that matter. And that is my review. Like always, your book cluster. I don't know book cluster. I know, I was a bit harsh, but it's my opinion. So if you do have any other opinions, write them in the comment section down below. Have a great day and goodbye.